minds welcome back to learn with sos my name is steve sebastian also of knust school of business and today i'm on it to walk you through process improvement and analysis lesson a in service operations management isd 457 but hey great minds before we get started please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to stay connected and also to get more wonderful content like this and also i have a surprise for you at the end of this tutorial or video i will introduce you to a site called brosmart.com where you can go and practice test samples on almost all the courses currently we've uploaded few of the courses that we are hoping by the end of this year 2021 we would have uploaded most of the business courses including service operations management all right let's crack on now we begin with what a process is what is a process in simple terms a process is a series of actions or steps that is taken in order to achieve a particular end so we always take a process with a goal in mind. A case in point is the process you went through before you became a student of KNUST. Some of us went to the bank. Some of us also went to the post office. We bought the voucher. We went to the cafe. We entered our details online. We submitted a form and we had a notification. And right now we are here. That was a process. So all the steps we are going through we are making you become a student of KNUST. That is a process. Now, if you look at the process, you can see that a process contains um, individual steps or actions taken. So that is called an activity. So an activity is the steps or tasks in the execution of, of a process. Let's make an assumption here. Let's assume that um, a staircase is a process. So each step you take as you climb up the staircase or climb down becomes an activity. So we can infer that two or more activities makes a process and the activity should be interrelated and you have a goal in mind. Now when two or more processes that are related come together and they are managed becomes a system. So a system is a set of in interrelated and interdependent processes that are managed and have a specific purpose. So now we can say that two or more activities taken to execute something becomes a process. And two or more processes that are interrelated and managed becomes a system. I hope you are following. Now, what makes some activities a process what are the key elements of a process one every process have distinct and and start point so a process should start with something in mind and end with something in mind secondly every process take inputs and transforms or add value to the inputs and bring them out as outputs. For example, as students of Kane University, the university took us in first year as an input. Right now, value is being added to us. We are being transformed by all the courses we are, I mean, reading. So as we complete, we become fresh graduates. We are an output and the organizations will be chasing after us. The inputs that a process takes can be raw materials, data, or labor, or personnel. Thirdly, every process includes some actions that are one, definable, they are predictable, they are repeatable, and they are measurable. If you look at the process you go through before you become a student of KNUSD, you can define it, you can predict it that the moment I, 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 I buy the voucher, that is where I move to. And it's repeatable all over the years. That's the same process. 
maybe just some small adjustment is done and it's measurable if the process doesn't go well you should be able to know or if it's if it goes well you should be able to know that oh this process is better and lastly every process should have a specific purpose and that purpose is that a process should add value for the customer so please these are the four key elements of a process that you need to keep in mind if something fails to meet one or more of these elements it doesn't qualify to be a process now we are not just interested in knowing what a process is just that a process is just a series of actions taken to achieve a goal no you want to improve the process i know some of us has um some of us have come across some processes that we thought something could have been done to the process to make it more efficient and effective some of us when given the chance we can improve some of the processes around us yeah so this brings us to process improvement as the name connotes process improvement simply means you are making the process better you just want to make the process free from flaws and process improvement is different from firefighting or crisis management with firefighting or crisis management is reactive in nature when do fire service personnel fight fire? They only fight fire when there is fire. So it's reactive. They wait for the fire to come or the problem to arise before they take actions to mitigate the problem. However, process improvement is not like that. It is proactive. They don't wait uh, to see a flaw or a mistake in the process. No, it's a deliberate attempt to make sure that the process achieve the desired goal. So process improvement is a deliberate attempt by organizations to improve their processes. I hope, I hope you are following. Okay, so that is process improvement. Don't forget it is what proactive. Now, why do we engage in process improvement? What are the merits that organizations derive from improving their processes? One, organizations involved in processes, sorry, involved in process improvement seek to one, learn what causes things to happen in a process. As you are trying to improve the process, you, you will learn through the improvement how things happen. And the knowledge acquired through that can one help you to reduce variation. Variation simply means when a process deviates from its normal course. Also, the knowledge can help you to remove activity that contributes no value to the product or service produced. There are so many processes we go through in our schools, in our halls, our workplaces that as if we take our time to analyze the process very well we realize that there are a lot of activities that are unnecessary they are they are rigorous bureaucratic that can be removed from the process to make it more efficient and effective and also the same knowledge can help you to improve your customer satisfaction because if you remember the last key element of a process is that it should have a goal and that goal is that it should satisfy the customer. Lastly, process improvement can help establish a culture where everyone becomes a fire preventer because process improvement is reactive in nature. You don't wait for the problem to arise before you take your tools, no. You, you try to find the problems yourself before they arrive. So, the culture where everybody becomes a fire preventer rather than a firefighter. So you see, it's worth, I mean, engaging yourself in process improvement. All right. Now, in improving processes, there are two broad ways of improving processes. One is what we call continuous improvement. Continuous improvement is 
a quality management paradigm. Paradigm is like a framework of analysis. Yeah. So it was born from total quality management and it adopts an approach to improving performance which assumes many small incremental improvement steps. So continuous improvement is improving a process gradually, small, 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 like how a process works, slowly but surely, or how, how the moon moves, slowly. That is continuous improvement. It transcends into the future. So you don't start and you end today, no. It's done almost every day. So continuous improvement is also known as Kaizen. Kaizen is a Japanese term because total quality management is assumed to originate from Japan. That is Toyota Company. So Kaizen means continuous improvement or small incremental improvement steps. Then the opposite or the brother of continuous improvement or Kaizen is what we call radical improvement, aka re-engineering. This is the fundamental rethinking and radical redesign of business processes to achieve dramatic improvement. That's the key word. We want an, a, a yuta change, a complete change. Sorry, this reminds me of some of us in our senior high schools. We had some headmasters and headmistresses. They were giving us headaches. All of a sudden, they were no more. They were they were changed, and new I mean heads were in charge. That is an example of continuous improvement and such improvements can be in the area of performance such as cost quality service and speed and the question is which of the following ways of improving processes or a process is the best is it doing continuously or radically changing the thing or re-engineering it well it depends the circumstance will tell you whether you will do it incrementally or you will change it radically. So there is no, I mean, hard rule about this. Now, let's look at the differences between re-engineering or radical redesign against um, Kaizen or continuous improvement. One, re-engineering replaces one process with so one process with a completely new and different one. So you take this one, you take it away, you play with a new one. That is re-engineering. Whilst Kaizen or continuous improvement improves the process over time, it is done slowly. Secondly, re-engineering is used if there are new changes or challenges to the system. So if there is a challenge, you want to do away with the challenge, you just use re-engineering. Whilst with continuous improvement, it is used to stabilize and enhance an already effective process. So re-engineering is like, take this, move it away, replace But with Kaizen, the system is already effective. You want to just enhance it small, a little bit. Also, re-engineering is a one-time event. It's done, it's like a project. You do it once, it's gone. But Kaizen or continuous improvement is an ongoing event. And lastly, with re-engineering, the process owner is highly involved because the thing is done one at a time. It won't happen again, so you should be actively involved. However, with continuous improvement, because it, it, it is done almost every day, the owner is mildly involved, which really makes sense. Now, let's analyze this quote from Toyota. We achieve brilliant results from people with average capabilities who operate and improve brilliant processes. Our competitors achieve average results from brilliant people who operate broken processes. We will beat them. That is Toyota company. Now, what is the meaning of this quote? Now, if you look at Toyota very well, they want to emphasize something. Now, they want, they want to tell us that 
the moment your process is brilliant it doesn't matter if you use people with average capabilities you will what achieve brilliant results so toyota processes is brilliant though they can use people with average capabilities they are expecting what a brilliant result however if in organization a competitor to be precise is using a broken processes with with the most brilliant people in the world their results will still be average so the bottom line is to win in the market you should be more i mean fixated on your processes if you want to improve your processes it doesn't matter the kind of personnel you have you will achieve what a brilliant result so as future supply chain managers when given the chance to improve our results we should start from the bottom line the process if the process is good oh the results is, is guaranteed all right let's look at some types of services and their example you see um services can be categorized based on their processes or their process type and this helps management to identify each process type with its challenge so we take the first process type project a project is a one-time activity with an end with a start and an end point to achieve a particular goal which consumes resources an example of a project is a consultant service when you want to establish a business or any other venture you might need a consultant an expert it is done once you don't you don't consult every day no so what is the feature or characteristic it is a one of a kind engagement we come to job shop job shop is a service process type that deals with customized or bespoke activities an example is the hospital if you go to the hospital there are a lot of specialized department we can all go to see the same doctor but you remember that you go to the doctor with different ailments even if you are suffering from the same malaria hi sorry how i will be diagnosed will be different from how you be diagnosed so that is what a job shop i mean customized services then we have another um service process type called batch batch is whereby a group of customers is treated same simultaneously an example is an airline you see different people from all walks of life are in the same plane and they are being transported from one point to another they are treated the same for example class of logistics 2022 is a batch so you are from different places but you are seen as, as as a group that is a batch and batch and um, process type 2 has its own challenge mostly it is um uh, depleting inventory but we look at flow another process type flow is a process type whereby the activities are sequenced in a fixed way example is an assembly line it moves from one stage to the other so as it gets to the last activity the, the product or item is is, is being um, completely manufactured and so an example is cafeteria most receptions wedding receptions have this cafeteria thing you see people line up you save yourself so before you get to the bottom you've already saved yourself then we have the continuous process type the one we talk about uninterrupted delivery example is ecg and i i, I know you are saying in your heart that oh this thing doesn't work but that, that that's the reality so these are the types of service processes they are being categorized as project job shop batch flow or continuous based on the processes and each of them comes with its own i mean challenges now we've been talking about process improvement process improvement now there is a saying that if you can't draw the problem then you don't know you can't solve it and it's true to, to a certain point this brings us to what a, a flow chart is before you can solve a problem you should be able to diagram the problem 
is not done in abstraction. So a flow chart or flow charts are visual representations of an organization's processes using symbols. There are standard symbols we use in drawing a flow chart to represent each step. So before you can improve a process, you need to diagram it. And the, the, the flow chart depicts the separate steps of a process in sequential order. What does it do? It helps the team members to identify points where the problems might occur. Flowchart has got a lot of names. People call it flow diagrams, macro flowchart, top down flowchart, process maps, micro maps, service maps, or deployment flowchart. So just get yourself acquainted with some of these names. You might meet them somewhere. So let's look at some of the standard symbols used in a flow chart. The first symbol is what we call the terminator. The terminator is an ellipse, like the shape of an egg, and it represents a start or a stop in a process. So before you begin a process, it should be an ellipse. People call it the alpha and the omega. Mm -hmm. So that's the ellipse, that's the symbol for you. Then the operation, that one is it's a rectangle and it represents a process or an action step. So any action or a step in a process, we use a rectangle to denote it. Then decision, we use a diamond to represent a question or a branch. So if within the process you want to branch to something or you want to ask a question, yes or no question, you use a diamond to represent it. Then when there is a delay or a wait, you use a triangle to represent a delay or inventory of goods. So when there is delay in a process or when there is inventory at a particular, uh, sorry, at a place, we use um, a triangle. And lastly, flow, we use an arrow to represent the movement of customers' goods or information. So let's look at a diagram with all these symbols for us to understand how a flow chart really looks like. Now, let's look at process analysis. The di diagram will come later. Process analysis explains how the steps of a procedure leads to its outcomes. We are, we are analyzing. These are the steps within the process. How do these steps in order achieve the targeted goal so the purpose of process analysis is to explain how to do something or how something works in order to argue for the effectiveness of a proposed process so you should be able to analyze the process to know with these processes will it will it achieve the required goal or it wouldn't So now this is the diagram I was talking about early on about uh, a flow chart. You can see all the symbols here. Yes. So this is um, a process flow diagram of a mortgage service. So let's quickly um, brush through. So first, we can see it begins with an ellipse. That's a terminator. So what do you do? They will first what accept the mortgage. Then, as they accept this pool of mortgage from a lot of people, there is an inventory or there might be a delay here where we have the mortgage application. That's why it's a triangle. Then it has two branches. So let's talk about the app branch. So from the mortgage application, it will branch to property survey. So they have to go and survey your property. You see, the CT below the property survey is called cycle time. You look at that one in our next tutorial. The cycle time is the average time it takes to perform an activity. So that means when you apply for mortgage, it takes them 90 minutes to survey your property. Then below the property survey, too, we have another activity. That is credit report. Cycle time is 45 minutes. Then it moves to title search. Cycle time is what 30 minutes. So you see, all the steps are denoted by what a rectangle. Then, 
as they complete the application a lot of inventory is held here and there might be a delay here so complete application to is denoted with what a triangle it moves to a decision or a branch with a diamond either the application is correct or not each will branch to another thing then finally it ends with what finish process in the same ellipse so this is an example of how a process flow diagram look like you can go to the internet and look for more examples and you should be able to draw I mean a process diagram given the processes yeah so every process diagram has some important parameters that you need to know so in our next video you'll be looking at cycle time capacity capacity utilization the bottleneck throughput time rush order flow time total direct labor content and direct labor utilization these involve a lot of calculations so i will advise you to get your calculators ready we are going to learn how to calculate these parameters given a process flow diagram all right so this is where we end today's video it's been wonderful having you and thank you and see you for another lesson so that's the site brosman.com you can go and register for now later on when we upload the questions we will let you know so till then see you when i see you bye bye